If we look at the overall music industry, we can see that sales have gone up for all genres. So what does this mean for electronic music? Well, one of the best ways for us to look at that is to have a look at some statistics from Spotify. This slide on the left, you can see countries around the world ranked by the number of electronic music streams in that country. So here's the top 10, unsurprisingly. The USA is number one in the list. But you can see both Mexico at number four and Brazil at number seven shows that Latin American influence coming through. Dance now represents 4% of total dance sales in the US. That makes it the fifth most popular genre. So why don't we move on to look at Germany? Hopefully, wherever you are in the room, you can see that that growth of the last three years is phenomenal. It's now at 7% of total turnover. That's twice the share that dance had in Germany just three years ago. Which genres are ranking most highly on Beatport from 2015 all the way through to just recently in Q2 2017? The big orange line at the top, techno, number one. Other than one quarter, it has been the number one selling genre on Beatport. We've ranked the genres in the electronic music space by which are most popular, which ones are being played out the most. In this case, house rules. It's number one, it's up there, and it has been for the last year. But once again, the same trend in drum and bass. You can see the orange line kind of moving up and down there. That's drum and bass gaining huge popularity over recent years. Instagram is the platform where the DJs are growing their social media fan base the most. But it's at currently at 11 times the rate of Facebook. So what then about a subject that Ben touched upon and, and is going to be covered in a lot more detail in the rest of IMS, which is gender diversity. And clearly, look, it still remains a key issue in our industry. This is a study which many of you may have read. Um, Thump did a study of electronic music festivals last year and looked at the percentage of artists that were female. The average was just 17%, one in six. So what about the key festival brands? What's been going on? You know, what have they been doing to try and grow their brand across the world? This slide shows the number of events run by two of the biggest players, two of the key biggest brands. On the left-hand side, you've got Tomorrowland. On the right-hand side, Ultra. Now, not any of these guys grown the number of festivals that they operate, which is the Orange Bar, but they've also obviously introduced a whole bunch of partner events to supplement those key festivals and grow their brand worldwide. Mexico, we saw it earlier in the Spotify top 10 list. Second highest penetration of Spotify, right, after Sweden. That's impressive. And Latin America really is a focus area for dance music, and there's a hell of a lot going on. And it would be amiss for me not to cover some technology trends. I'm sure everywhere you go and every news article you read, someone's talking about VR, someone's talking about AI, someone's talking about whatever. But actually, dance is at the forefront of a lot of these technologies, and actually it's really well placed to make the most from them. So a few covered on this slide, VR, We've had Boiler Room and Google come together for their techno in Berlin. Next one down, live streaming. We're live streaming right now using Facebook Live, but Avicii's recently used it for a studio session to create a new track. EDC did their lineup announcement on Facebook Live. Another key trend, OTT video, and I'm sure all of us probably in this room are Netflix subscribers. They've now got 100 million of them worldwide. But Netflix have spent their money on two electronic music-related programs recently. The most recognizable one is Steve Aoki's documentary, which was released last year. They say they're spending money because they believe that their 100 million subscribers want to watch. Finally, a subject which is really, really interesting, AI and bots. If you haven't tried it already, go sample Hardwell's Facebook Messenger bot. It is really interesting, really great. Over half a million people have already used it. Now, if you'd have asked me in 2007, what proportion of, of sales in the US were dance related, I wouldn't have been able to give you an answer. Because Nielsen didn't report it. He didn't regard it as a significant enough genre to report separately. Now, dance represents 5% of sales. In Germany, as we saw earlier, 2% back in 2007, now 7%. What about the DJs? Well, there's very little data from 2007. We didn't really have Facebook, we didn't really have social media stats. So we thought we'd use the DJ Mag Top 100 as a kind of sample size of, of what to look at. On the left, all the way back in 2007. On the right, in red, 2016. And in the middle, some comparisons. Some indicative views of what's changed. Has there really been a changing of the guard of the DJs in our industry? 
And the answer is quite clearly yes. It's not a surprise probably that trance has given way to EDM as the most popular genre. But if we look at the age side of things, it's really interesting. Average age has only come down from 36 to 33, so only three years. But 10 years ago, there were no DJs in that top, one, uh, top, te top 10 that were less than 30 years old. Now half of them are. And that's a real indication of the new breed of artists coming through in our industry. But to return to festivals, to remember where we were 10 years ago, I've just picked the top three events, okay? Just the top three, the biggest three. What capacity did they have 2008? What capacity do they have now, 2017? Tomorrowland, just their boom event, just that, not the rest of the expansion, from 50,000 to 360,000. Seven times increase. EDCs move from LA to Vegas, six times increase. Ultra has expanded their event just in Miami, just in Miami alone, two and a half times more now capacity than there were 10 years ago. What does that mean? Well, just those three events have increased their capacity by five times in just 10 years, and now attract nearly a million people. So we think the industry is up 3% year on year to a total of $7.4 billion annually. Okay, and why? Well, there's a number of positive trends that we've covered that really are laying the foundation, not only for growth now, but growth in the future. 